you know, there's something very satisfying about removing the old leaves or pitchers from your North American pitcher plant. It's almost a month into winter here in Sydney, Australia, in what's been a very, very cold start to the winter. And now's the perfect time to get in there and start removing the old leaves from your plant, just like this Saracenia lacophila hybrid. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you a few tips on how I go about removing those old leaves and why I do it. I'm also gonna be covering a few care tips for my other carnivorous plants here at my nursery and how I look after them during the winter period. So for those of you who are wondering why I haven't been producing any videos lately, the reason is because we're actually in the process of moving. And in three weeks time, we'll be completely out of here and moving into a new place uh, 20 minutes away. So don't worry, I will be providing the details of our new address for those who want to visit my carnivorous plants nursery. So let's have a look on how to prune North American pitcher plants. All right, so let's have a closer look at this plant that I'm gonna be pruning. So this is a Saracenia lacophila hybrid. So it's crossed with a, another species. I'm not sure exactly what it's crossed with because it didn't come with any label when I first bought it. But one of my value customers, Paul, suggested it may be crossed with a Saracenia alata. And when I look at these pictures on how wide they are, I think that's a pretty good guess. So being a Saracenia lacophila, it did produce its biggest and best pitches in autumn. You can see how some of these pitches here are quite tall. They're around about, say, 60 to 70 centimetres tall. And then you've got these other shorter ones around here. So the shorter ones were produced in late summer, but the bigger ones were produced in autumn. And that's typical of Saracenia lacophila species. They thrive or they peak in autumn or fall. So Saracenia or North American pitcher plants are examples of temperate carnivorous plants. They live in areas where there are changes in the seasons. And in winter, they basically fall asleep, just like this one is right now. So even though there are pitchers here, it looks sort of pretty much alive. There's a lot of green sections. The plant is actually asleep. It's actually dormant. And there's a good reason for that. The reason is because it rebuilds its energy reserves in winter in readiness for spring when it's going to come up with new growth and it's also because carnivorous plants grow in sync with insect activity it doesn't make sense for a carnivorous plant to produce traps when there's nothing they catch so that's the reason why they go dormant in winter so what I tend to do is um, I tend to cut off all the leaves um, You'll notice how some of these leaves are more browner than others. Um, what happens is they tend to brown off from the bottom and work their way down. I just tend to remove everything. I know there are other growers out there which just leave the green sections on. The idea being is that they still gain energy from the sun through photosynthesis. So you can do that if you wish, but I've been doing this technique for years and my plants always do come up strongly. So suggesting it doesn't really matter whether you leave those green sections on or not. Okay, so like always, I like to wipe down my blades first with methylate spirits. That's just a way of sterilizing the blades, just kills any pathogens that you may spread from plant to plant. So once I've done that, I just get in there now start to remove the leaves. Okay, so just basically getting in there just with the tips of your blades. Just removing them like that. Over there. It's very simple. Just a removing the, the, the uh, pictures from the base. I know it seems very, very brutal here, but you're not hurting the plant in any way. As I said, the plant is actually asleep, it's dormant. So just these leaves here are just 
these which are browning off. So it's basically like removing the leaves from a deciduous tree. Now these brown sections, I just like to pull out by hand. Whoops, sorry about that. And that sort of comes out from the rhizome, just like that. So again, just continue on removing those pictures on the base. Over there. So when you're removing these leaves, try not to cut into the top of the rhizome, okay? So let's just zoom in there, I'll show you what I mean. See how you have that leaf there and you have that rhizome next to it? You don't want to cut too far over it because you may cut into that rhizome. So that's where the new growth is going to come from in spring. So that's why it's important to use the tips of your blade and just remove the, the old picture itself, okay? Just like that. The finished product with damage free rhizomes. So with all the old pictures removed, now's a great time to closely inspect the leaves for any signs of pests. I'll get into that in a sec, but before I do, what I normally do is after I've freshly cut off all the leaves from the top of the rhizome, I just give it a bit of a spray of organic based oil. This is um, eco oil and it's systemic meaning that it's going to get absorbed into the plant. And because that rhizome has been freshly cut, the oil will really get into that plant very quickly. And um, by spraying it on top like that, you're removing any pests like scale or thrips. And in spring, the plant should come up with fresh, healthy new growth. So let's have a look at some of the pests that you may find on your North American pitcher plant. Okay, so let's have a closer look at some of these pictures. Here's a healthy one over here. You can see the pitcher, and it's got the rib here on the outside. All well, looks pretty good. These are a couple of days old, these pictures, so they're not as fresh as they can be. Here's another healthy one over here. That's what it looks like. You'll see here how it's discolored. That's normal because as the insects get digested, the plant releases a digestive enzyme and in doing so, it colours the outside of the pitcher. That's quite normal as well, okay? So here, earlier, I did remove two scale that I found on the pitcher and they're easy to remove by with your finger and they've left these two marks over here. So scale is a sap-sucking insect and here we, here's one over here. See that? So they, as I said, they're quite easy to remove by hand. But what's important is that you know what they look like. And when they're not in such great numbers, they don't cause a problem. But if you allow them to multiply, they can sap, suck the sap out of their plants and the sugary secretion from the um, from the scale can cause sooty mold to grow as well. So that's a really dark coloured mold which can really affect the look of your plant. Okay, so it's just a fact of life because I'm growing my plants outdoors all year round and that my plants are always going to be vulnerable to pests. But what's important is that you know what to look out for and to treat the pests early to prevent any uh, widespread outbreak. Okay guys? 
So what's really interesting is this picture right in here. Let's have a look. So you may find pictures with holes in them like this. Okay, so it's really interesting. So what normally happens, I've actually seen this happen, you'll see wasps um, getting caught in the pictures and depending on how they land, so if they end up landing quite deep into the picture and they're hard up against the wall of the picture, they may start chewing their way out because wasps have quite powerful jaws and I've actually seen it happen. And you could literally hear the sound of the wasp munching its way through the picture wall. And depending on how determined that wasp is, it may get out. And in doing so, it leaves behind a hole in the side of the picture. So if you're seeing holes in your pictures, that's a sign that there's wasps around where you're growing your North American picture plants. But as I said, most of them do get caught because it's only the ones that really are hard up against the wall of the picture. And even then, if they don't exhaust themselves in the process, they may get out. Another pest that you may come across are thrips. Thrips are very tiny sap-sucking insects. They discolour leaves, as in the image. So how do you water your plant over the winter period? Well, because North American pitcher plants and Venus flytraps, for example, go dormant in the winter, they're not actually growing. They're dormant. They're basically in a rest or sleep mode. So therefore, they don't really need that much water. The best way to describe how much water to give your plant is to try and keep it damp, but not overly moist or overly wet as you would in the uh, warmer growing period. Now, uh, just like Venus flytraps, you can water your plant from the top. Or you can have your pot sitting in a tray of water. Now, because in the winter the evaporation rate is not as high as it would be in the warmer months, you don't have to water your plant um, that often. Even if you don't have water in your tray for a couple of days, that's okay. The main thing is that your peat moss is damp, but not dry. And as an indicator, if you've got some lush moss growing on the top of your peat moss there, then if that's green, then that's a sign that the roots of your plant uh, have got enough water as it is. Okay? So, so far we've talked about how to prune your North American pitcher plants, what pests to look out for, and the right amount of water you should give your plants over the winter period. And also, of course, how to treat those pests by using a systemic organic based oil. But what about sunlight? Well, my take on it is this is that uh, North American pitcher plants and Venus flytraps go dormant in the winter. So they're not actually photosynthesizing. So sunlight isn't really that important over the winter period. What's more important is the, is the comfort of that rhizome in the peat moss. Uh, giving it that right amount of water and also making sure that the plant actually does go dormant. So growing my plants outdoors here in Sydney, the advantage is that when winter arrives, the plants automatically do go dormant because of the lower temperatures. But for me to explain why I think that sunlight isn't that important, I've got to go up to my elevator wooden platform to explain it. So let's have a look. So here I am on my elevator wooden growing platform where I grow my carnivorous plants. Over here I've got my low-lying plants such as sundews, small North American pitcher plants and Venus flytraps of course. And over there is a big space because I've taken away a lot of my North American pitcher plants in readiness for our move. And over there I've got my pumice stone planter which I've taken out of my pond just to give those plants a little bit of light and I've got my cephalotus over here but what I wanted to highlight here is this shadow over here this long shadow that's been cast from this fence the reason being is because it's winter now the sun's position changes and it's a lot lower in the horizon over there on my left to my north than what it would be in spring or summer so in summer it's a lot higher over here so all this 
platform over here during the growing season is full of light. So what I have been doing in the last couple of years that I've been growing my plants here is that I just leave them where they are. I do a couple of changes which I'll get to in a second but all my North American pitcher plants and Venus flytraps just stay where they are. So as you can see some get sun over there and some are in the shade. But what the interesting thing is is that in early uh, spring when there's more light over here they all tend to come up at around about the same time. So those North American pitcher plants and Venus flytraps. So that to me indicates is that the amount of light that these plants are getting in the winter or the lack of light doesn't really have that much of an impact on them. The fact that they all coming up at the same time regardless of whether in the shade or not. So um, so that's my take on the amount of light that you should give your plants. It doesn't really matter that much so long as they're getting that light um, in early spring when they come up out of dormancy. This is in contrast to other carnivorous plants such as this Drosera spatulata which don't actually go dormant in winter, they just keep growing. So this one over here, or these plants over here were growing in the shade over here, so um, I've put, just put them out in the sun and they've really come up beautifully. Even though there's lack of insects around during the winter, they're still getting their energy through photosynthesis and they're looking quite healthy there as well, look how red they are. Over there in the distance I've got a, some Drosera capensis, Cape sundews, South African sundews, and one of them's even produced a nice flower stalk with flowers. So that says it all, that these plants, such as Cape sundews and Drosera spatulata, don't actually go dormant, they keep growing. We did get some very cold nights a couple of nights ago, it got down to about 3 degrees Celsius. So despite that, these plants are still flowering. So it's not in their DNA to just shut down and go to sleep like Venus flytraps and North American pitcher plants. So that's why I like to put position those plants out in the sunlight as much as I can. I've yet to move these ones over here, these Cape Sun Juice. But what's interesting over here is I've got these this bunch of Drosera Bermanii tropical sun dews, place them out in the sun. I also know that you can keep them growing as well throughout the growing period. They don't actually have to go dormant. A lot of the times they will die off when temperatures get to below 16 degrees Celsius. But for some reason these ones here are still going strong. I think it's the fact that they're out in the sun over there, they, they warm up nicely getting photosynthesis through the sun and they're catching whatever few insects there are around about. And over here of course I've got my cephalotus. In the last couple of years I've just had them here in the same spot. They're not getting any sunlight at all but they're still very much alive as you can see. From what I've experienced and what I've read, they do actually go dormant in winter, they actually slow down their growth. And when uh, early spring arrives, when there's more sunlight, they will come up out of their dormancy, just like they have in the past. So there you go, there you go, there you go. So there you have it, my take on the amount of sunlight that you should give your plants for the winter period. What's important is that they're getting their amount of sunlight, right amount of sunlight during the growing season. Not so important in winter, but for carnivorous plants that don't go dormant, such as Drosera spatulata and Cape sundews, Put them out in the sun so they can photosynthesize and gain energy through the sun.